What a difference a week makes. A week ago, we bottomed out at minus four, and today we are coming close to 80 degrees, and we've already had to run the air conditioner once. And to our supporters, I do apologize for the lack of a supporter stream yesterday. I will make that up to you next Monday, but for now, we need to get things back on track this week, starting with our surface analysis. We have another cold front coming through the central U.S. This is of Pacific origin. You can see the air behind it quite mild, lots of 30s and 40s, and up in the northern plains, only a few 20s. Down to the south, there's the warm air. We don't quite have a dry line set up. This is probably the beginnings of a dry line out in the hill country, dividing this single digit dew point from 50s out to the east, but not very much extent up to the north. We should see that dry line firm up by tomorrow. And that's due to rapidly increasing moisture advection. Dew points rising up to the 60s overnight. However, we can see that cold front coming south, bringing drier air. So this is not exactly a dry line. This is more of a cold front. The true dry line is located right out here, dividing the moist tropical air from the dry tropical air out near El Paso. So the cold front will roll in and push the moisture down to the coast again, but we'll see that moisture advection start to return once again around the weekend. And that should make a lot more progress northward before the next cold front comes southeast. Ah yes, the Storm Prediction Center. It is getting to that point in the year where we need to start looking at this more regularly because we're getting into storm season in the next month or so. Not much for the day one outlook. Day two outlook also not showing much and day three a little bit of potential from North Texas, Waco, Lufkin, Shreveport out towards Alabama. And that kind of alignment would be indicative of a cold front. So here we're talking about Thursday. Well, it looks like we're going to be under the influence of that ridging there. And let's see here, coming into Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, a little bit of shortwave energy rolling into the plains in the morning, or actually around midday. There it is. Pretty strong trough there. That looks to be coupled with a jet max over New Mexico. So a lot of lift heading into the panhandles. And then for the evening hours, that rolls out over northwest Texas and Oklahoma. Looks to me like the moisture may not be coupled with this very well. Yeah, it looks like we've kind of walked into a primordial chase forecast. It's kind of what it feels like. Yeah, there's Thursday morning right there. Looks like a lot of dry air has moved south of I-20. And just not very much recovery during the afternoon. Just weak 40s and 50s down in this area. So we're looking at strong upward motion coming in from New Mexico with a little tongue of marginal moisture out over East Texas. There's what the soundings look like. Yeah, it looks like some elevated moisture. In fact, it's pretty deep there, so I guess we're getting a little bit of a tropical fetch. We'll take a couple of samples here, and you can see the frontal inversion right there. And it looks like the deeper moisture up to about 10,000 feet. West-southwesterly flow and abundant, moderate moisture in the mid-troposphere. So this already tells me that we may see a lot of cloud layers, out cumulus, cirrus, that may affect the surface heating somewhat. Okay, so the upper lift is not really in phase with the moisture, and that's not going to really come together until Saturday and Sunday. So is there anything coming down the pipe? Well, we'll just fast forward this thing up, and there comes one wave about Saturday, but there's no 
moisture. Saturday and a Sunday, that's where it's probably going to start bulking up a little bit. And I can see a cutoff low there in the southwestern U.S. So this will be slowing down and deepening a bit. Some good jet stream energy over Texas, Oklahoma. And the lift finally rolls out over Monday and Tuesday. Looks like a lot of it concentrated there in the I-40 corridor around Tuesday. Hmm, so what's our moisture doing Monday and Tuesday? Well, yeah, it is bulking up. See those 60s coming up to the Red River? A little shot of cool air comes south, and then, and then 50s coming up into the DFW area for Tuesday. So, yeah, I think probably Tuesday is going to be the day we're going to watch. Upper level lift moving across this area in about a week. Looks like a dry line down to the south, and I think this may be a cold front up to the north. Okay, so what do those temperatures look like? Yeah, that's going to be cool air up there in the panhandles. Cold front right there. Warm front through here and dry line down through here. So it's kind of a classic chase setup for the Red River Valley and South Oklahoma. So March 2nd in a week, that's going to be a day to watch. And I guess there's no reason we can't bring up the Cape most unstable cape not that great <laughs> so we shall see there's a look at the soundings in the Red River region yeah some shallow moisture I mean that's not bad that's about 100 millibars of mid to upper 50s but that's a pretty stout cap right there and those lapse rates not very impressive but, you know, a lot could change. That's 180 hours out. Now, referring back to the upper level chart, one problem is that the steep lapse rates are going to be bound up with the cold core low up to the north, especially north of the actual jet axis. So down to the south, this is to the right of the jet, which means a lot of warm air in the mid and upper levels. And... You can see that right there. Up to the north, though, yeah, take a look around Springfield, and you can see the much better lapse rates in that region. So this little pocket of upper-level energy going a little bit too far north, and the moisture too far south. So I think that's one of the problems we're going to be dealing with unless things change a little bit. So Monday evening could be a good day in the panhandles if we can get moisture into that region. Tuesday evening, I'm not too sure about. I think that low may be too far to the north. And by Wednesday evening, the upper level low has opened up and moved out to the coast. But we've got another one to look forward to after that. So we'll see what happens. Let's see what's happening today. Well, definitely a nice day across the southwestern U.S. We've got 80 at Tucson, 80 at Yuma, and 84 at Thermal, California. However, northwesterly flow in the San Joaquin Valley and at Tonopah, those are two signals that tell me that there's polar air coming down from the northwest. Certainly a very mild air mass, but it is present, and I think the leading edge is running about like that right there. Further out to the east, you can see that westerly flow with the passage of a, another wave there. And the zonal component, very strong, helping to develop that lee side trough. And that's in its favored area around La Junta and Lamar, Colorado. And those temperatures in Texas, quite warm. Lots of 70s all the way up to Oklahoma. And some of the warmest readings I'm seeing are 82 at Fort Stockton and looks like very close to 80 along the cap rock. Not much to say about the southeast U.S. Certainly looks like they've had a push of cool air. However, the air is not that cold because we don't see the development of cold advection stratocumulus. 
So it does look to be a quiet weather pattern in that part of the country. And I'm starting to see maybe what looks like a few forest fires in Alabama. Maybe we can check that out. Yeah, we'll look at anything interesting. So there you go. Yeah, that's definitely smoke. There's a couple of uh, cool products here. If you go to College to Page and click over here to Natural Color and Fire, a lot of times that will bring out the heightened color within fires, but we can see that these are probably very localized since they don't really show up very well. And temperatures in that part of the country, pretty mild, with high pressure down in the Gulf of Mexico. And that's bringing this warm southwesterly flow into Georgia and Alabama. 70s all the way out towards Augusta and Atlanta. And going up to the northeast U.S., westerly flow. Well, that's a little bit of a change. It's not northwesterly. Typically, northwesterly flow brings in cold advection and much cooler air masses from Ontario and Quebec. So here it looks like we're tapping a little bit of that Midwest air where it's in the 40s and 50s. And as a result, temperatures are pretty much in the 30s and 40s. And as we mentioned, some snow on the ground in Pennsylvania, in Ohio. And there goes the remains of the backside of that system there into Maine and New England. And that'll bring us into this area fair weather, at least for another day. Now the north central U.S., that is where we have a little bit of weather going on. You can see that Bear Clinic system up there in the Dakotas. That comma shape. The widest part of that common shape, usually associated with the warm air advection. And the subsonant area right there, and that tends to be associated with the cold air advection and the westerly flow on the backside of that system. This here looks like a little bit of convective growth, maybe some instability there in the low levels. I mean, it kind of resembles a thunderstorm, even though that's not what it is. So that's going to be northwestern Iowa. And we can see our surface system there in southwestern Minnesota. We can also pick out the warm tongue, this area of mid-40s and 50s. It actually comes all the way up into here. The cold front located, I guess it's going to be roughly like that, a lot of downslope back behind it. And the warm air advection region, it's going to be right here over the warm front and up north of the surface cyclone. So that little pattern that we saw, that's out in this area. Probably some very strong warm air advection feeding right over that warm front. Let me just get a better look at that thing. Yeah, and when we zoom in and roll the animation, we can see that that's kind of a wave feature right there. See how that pops up right there? It, it resembles what we usually see with an anvil, but that's not what that is. That's just kind of an artifact there. Little wave cloud. And up in the northwestern U.S., looking like this. Now that looks like cold air advection. See all the cumuliform clouds in Montana, northern Idaho right there, even some true anvils. Yeah, those are definitely anvils. And this is a cold air mass coming south and modifying significantly over the warmer terrain. And we pan to the northwest and look at that air mass there. And you can see the temperatures are in the 30s, but lots of showers in the area, snow showers in the mountains, cold rain showers coming out of the clouds in the valleys. And that'll probably settle down as we get into evening. And very likely what's happening is we've got a so-called maritime polar air mass coming on shore through Washington and Oregon. And also some very cold polar air, not very cold, but cooler polar air coming down from Alberta and modifying over the warmer terrain in Montana. And that's 15 minutes, so that's going to be your sweet spot. So we'll leave it there, and hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow. Those who have written in with concern after we didn't post a video yesterday, don't worry, things are fine here. We have got power and water. 
but things have been very busy in the wake of the storm, and I've just been trying to play catch up. Okay, until next time, have a great one, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.